Hello and a warm welcome to federal special program, Capital Beat. Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav is meeting West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee today, giving an indication that some sort of a non-Congress opposition front looks like in the making. Samajwadi Party is also holding its two-day national executive in Kolkata. So now the big question is that can the two parties really bring together an alliance which is minus Congress? I'm told that uh, some eight parties are looking forward to forming an alliance and these eight parties, which of course includes Samajwadi Party and TMC, are Aam Admi Party, BRS, RJD, NCP, NC, that's National, Con uh, National Conference, Shiv Sena. So uh, I'm, and there are reports that probably these parties will meet up in Delhi sometimes towards the end of the month. So what do the broader indications look like? And uh, this particular opposition front, which is minus Congress, uh, how feasible and how logical or rather how workable it looks like is the million dollar question. I'm joined by uh, the veteran journalist and the party spokesperson. So I'm joined by Monadipa Banerjee, veteran journalist. Thank you, Monadipa, for joining on the federal. We have Samajwadi Party spokesperson, Dr. Ashutosh Varma, and we have the Trinamool Congress uh, spokesperson, Shubankar Bhattacharya. Thank you, Shubankar, for joining on the federal. And I'm told that I'll be joined by uh, the veteran journalist from Uttar Pradesh, Sharad Pradhan, as well. So I want to begin by Dr. Ashutosh Varma. Yeah. First of all, I really want to understand that you know the idea of uh, uh, holding the national executive in Kolkata. What is the idea behind holding holding this two days national executive in Kolkata? Has it got to do uh, a lot with with some kind of a political messaging which the party wants to send out? So look, Nilu, uh, Nilu, uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I don't find any such a huge explanation for that because there are two uh, basically reasons. Uh, Kolkata is a place where a national executive meeting of Samajwadi Party has already taken in 2012 uh, under the leadership of uh, Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav and when he was the uh, national president at that time. Uh, now at this juncture when we are just facing the 2024 national general elections, uh, Samajwadi feels that being the largest state, so the largest state with a maximum uh, uh, Lok Sabha constituency, the Samajwadi Party as a main opposition uh, party has a private role in forming a new government. And that could be a very uh, good platform to make a national executive meeting outside the Uttar Pradesh. Uh, you have seen that uh, how Akhilesh Yadav has traveling across the India in the last two or three months. And that could be also a valid reason because he is a very good, uh, he has a very good bonding between all these things. Even Mamta ji, we, we think that we have a very, uh, among the, all the leaders, Mamta ji has a very good bonding um, uh, with Akhilesh ji. So mm -hmm. I think the, these two reasons are there to have a national executive meeting. Definitely, uh, it will make a new changes in party and also our scenario in 2024 elections. Okay. So uh, you it, uh, is the party also trying to, Dr. Ashutosh, send out a message that you want to expand the footprints of Samajwadi Party, which is which is beyond Lucknow, which is beyond UP. Definitely, uh, because initially we have a footprint since uh, Rajasthan in the Chhattisgarh in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, today also we have a one seat in uh, Gujarat in Maharashtra. So why not? As a party, we have to expand ourselves. We have to do all things. And uh, as Mulan Singh uh, ji has also done in his regime. So this is a way we can expand our party. We, we have a lot of uh, followers across the country, the socialist leaders across the country. We have Madhu Limya ji from the western part of the uh, country. We have Sharad Yadav ji from the eastern part of the country. So there are a lot of socialist leaders across the world. So why not to have a, a collective uh, effort to make a big effort for the Samajwadi party? This is the oh, time we see. Right. Uh, veteran journalist from Uttar Pradesh, Sharad Padhan has also joined. Uh, Sharad, welcome on... Uh... Uh, on the federal. Okay, uh, now let me come to Monadipa. Monadipa, what, what is the kind of, uh, you know, signal which we are getting out of this meeting uh, between Mamta Banerjee and Akhilesh, this whole idea of uh, the, the, the Samajwadi Party exec, national executive being held in Kolkata? What are the political uh, signals? What are you getting? Well, uh, the signals are there for all to read, though Akhilesh uh, Yadav or Tunamul Congress have neither have spelt out 
uh, what exactly the agenda is. It just could be a courtesy call. Uh, but Mamta Banerjee and Akhilesh Yadav, as Ashutoshji said, have had a very long and close relationship for some time. I think Mamta Banerjee did go to Uttar Pradesh to even, you know, campaign for SP in the last elections. Uh, so there is a relation, relationship. And the other issue that seems to be bringing the two parties closer is what seems to be an inherent anti-Congressism. And therefore, you know, very significant that first of all, Akhilesh Yadav decides to hold his party's national executive meeting or working committee meeting here in Kolkata and then goes and visits Mamta Banerjee uh, on this very first day of his visit at her home in Kolkata. Signals from there are yet to come out. You know, they haven't met as yet, technically. But uh, um, it's uh, very uh, interesting that, indeed, the two of them are meeting. What is important is what Akhilesh has already said. You know, he has already positioned himself and Ramta Banerjee as against ED, CBI, IT, and against BJP, of course, and unspoken as yet, it seems to me the two of them uh, could consider being part of an opposition a unity or united alliance that is minus of the Congress. That's the way it seems to be drifting. And given that the left is, you know, the biggest, is one of the main opposition parties in Bengal today, right. you know, the left and the Congress are going to get left out of this kind of access that seems to be in the making. Right. Uh, Shubankar, what I want to ask you is that this whole front, which is being talked about, which will be, of course, minus Congress and your entire narrative seemingly looks like that you're going to center it around the misuse of enforcement agencies. Now, uh, what I mean, how do we read this whole, uh, you know, the upping up of uh, the Adani issue? by all the opposition parties in Delhi, you, are, you all are witnessing what's happening in parliament, that Adani is the center focus. But we do not see Trinamool anywhere. We do not see Samajwadi party uh, anywhere near the parliament premises. Uh, no, no, no. Yes, Dr. Ashutosh, you were... I think, I, think, I think Samajwadi party was always there for the protest. Today also, yesterday also, and day before yesterday. Okay, uh, so Ram, Gupal, you... Ram Gupal ji was Say... there and uh, the parliamentarian was also there. Okay, okay. So for you, Adani is an issue. So you have uh, uh, probably sided with the other opposition parties who are sitting inside parliament. But what about your party, Shubhankar? Why is Srinamool Congress uh, uh, leaving out others totally it's on its own uh, soul walk? Uh, Nidu, uh, like Ashutosh said, actually, uh, see, we left a few of the names from Samajwadi Party. And there are a couple of names from uh, Trinamool as well, uh, who have been quite vocal about Adani issue, the Pegasus, and a lot of other issues. The only point is, see, uh, basically each and every issue is not being covered by the federal or the wire or satellite. So there are other ideas as well, right? And we have a particular name for them. So I actually don't blame the entire media class for that. But it is only that what exactly is getting propagated. What is getting propagated is uh, only one-sided story. The other-sided story, if you go into the depth, you'll find that Mohua Mutra has been very vocal about the Dani issue, very vocal about the Pegasus, very vocal about uh, you know the uh, uh, the misutilization of the government agencies. So we have been vocal about it. It is only that it is not being properly media managed or something like that. You just want to be vocal. You don't want to become part of the optics also, as what is being played out in parliament. You just want but to be... Not optic. You, you, did you forget that our leaders were put behind the bars uh, while they were sitting outside the parliament? It started happening from there. And uh, if you remember, uh, Derek O'Brien was totally stopped from entering the parliament because uh, he was very much vocal about Pegasus. Similar thing happened even with uh, uh, Shukindu Shekhar, uh, 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 who started, you know, talking about Adani, and uh, he was literally stopped. Uh, Moha Moitra, she was blamed, you know, taking uh -huh. names about, uh, you know, for some BJP leaders, whereas she was being actually howled by the BJP leaders in Parliament itself. So a lot of things was was optical. A lot of things that we were vocal. Only thing is that it couldn't be channelized due to, you know, the, I think uh, the satellite is also now being a little, uh, I think, uh, biased about. No, no, why am I asking? <laughs> like, 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 
Trinamool leaders are not to be seen along with the opposition parties who are sitting outside in, uh, within the parliament premises. Look at those visuals. Everybody is talking about the absenteeism of Trinamool Congress. Don't you think? Well, I guess, I guess, I guess, actually, I think uh, 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 our parliamentarians were a little afraid because we were getting, you know, picturized as the, uh, the party which was more seen uh, within the well uh, as compared to being on the chair. Uh, hmm. uh, if you remember uh, the later part of last year, 2022, uh, we were being blamed about, you know, our tearing papers and the Trinoval party members are always in the well. They're not, never sitting in now the you got I scared. Now we are being very now careful. Now you got scared, right? So now you got so scared and being, that's the reason? No, now we are being very careful because I don't know when we get tagged as, you know, uh, hooligans and all. Stop or, or calling in <laughs> parliamentarians with names. So anyways... Uh, the point here, what we are discussing about is that, see, the thing is, I think what we want to point is that collectively it is not happening. If it is not happening collectively, that there is one particular big reason and that is uh, the role of Congress, you know. The Congress, you know, putting everything together, they were the largest, you know, the national party and uh, uh, it, was, it was on them to bring all the regional parties together put them into uh, a, 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 a major role, you know, allow them to breathe, you know, you have to give. Why the Congress is not being able to bring all the regional parties together, one of the major reasons is when you don't allow the breather to any small party. Hmm. Every party, like uh, just now uh, uh, Dr. Vama Asutosh was saying that, uh, see, uh, every party has right to expand its wings everywhere. We did allow uh, Samajwadi Party to come to Bengal, and so did the Samajwadi Party. If you remember, Mamta Didi went to Lucknow, and I don't know, it is much lesser known fact that uh, even uh, the TMC has started its major uh, wing in uh, UP also. If you remember, uh, Lalitesh Pati Tripathi and Rajesh Pati also mm -hmm. joining Trinamul. Mm -hmm. And they were given a lot of uh, responsibility to actually organize the thing over there. But it went down. The major reason was that they were not allowed to actually, you know, take away uh, 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 the share from the Samajwadi, this thing, because somehow it was being felt that, you know, having uh, the Muslim vote share might get deflected. So we didn't want, want to bring any harm to the Samajwadi party. And then Didi withdrew from the entire election process. So this is some kind of thing. It is... I think the bond between Akhilesh and Didi has been far more apolitical than political. Okay. So they have gone ahead of... Uh... Right. Okay. I'll go to Sharat Pradhan now. Welcome, sir. Uh, yeah. I, I lost your audio when I was asking you. Initially. I know there's something wrong with the connectivity. Today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Sharaji, for joining on uh, okay. the federal. Now, uh, this whole idea of Samajwadi Party and Trinamool coming together, mm -hmm. taking a lead... Uh, you know, in an indication to form a non-Congress opposition front. Do you think that mm -hmm. this is really possible? I mean, minus Congress forging an alliance, uh, it will just look like a mirage, perhaps? Or really, you do think... You're, you're yes. absolutely right, Milu, because uh, uh, it makes it political, it doesn't make political sense for, I mean, notionally, it may be fine to well-known uh, top regional parties joining hands in states where they neither have, like for TMC doesn't have presence in Uttar Pradesh, it's only for namesake. And likewise, Samajwadi Party has a namesake presence in West Bengal. Hmm. It's a different issue that uh, uh, Samajwadi Party has had a long, very old association with Bengal because Kiran Moy Nanda, who is now their the vice president, he has been associated right from Mulayam Singh the other's days. And I remember attending the, the, one of the executives in Calcutta in those days. When it was called Calcutta, incidentally, I think, I, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, so, so that is a different issue. But the point is, uh, Samajwadi Party and uh, TMC coming together uh, and to set up a non-Congress, non-BJP uh, third front, it may only be of notional value. It may not uh, stir any kind of activity on ground because for the reasons I mentioned to you. If yet they want to do it only for the sake of putting up a, I don't know how much it's because they try to rope in or, or KCR tried to rope in these people, all those people who do not want Congress to be the main pivot. 
But the fact of the matter is that Congress is the only party. It may be down in the dumps, which nobody we can dispute. But still, it remains the only party which has uh, cognizable presence across the country. Right. No matter how bad in, in what bad shape it is, but one has seen that still it is a party which has, still is uh, is in power in several states, and uh, and they are the main contest, and that is the reason why you find Narendra Modi and BJP lambasting the Congress and Rahul Gandhi, who otherwise for them are meaningless. But their entire target, they are always on the target because BJP somewhere down the line. is doesn't want that congress should at all be uh, come as their main opposition party they may say different things but fact is that they would want to have multiple opposition groups getting together and not having congress on board that right. serves their purpose absolutely what you what you saying uh, what you no i'll come to you shubhankar but let me go to dr ashutosh varma what sharachi just pointed out uh your party will end up giving advantage to bjp because the opposition obviously will look like a divided house for whatever reasons you don't want to come along with the congress and the other parties uh why are you i mean what is the ultimate objective then to oppose bjp or to support bjp Ah. What is Samajwadi so, Party wanting to do? So, so look, uh, the statement uh, Mr. Sharad has said that you got a crux from there. Once you have a single uh, opposition, the BJP is one to one with that opposition. It could be Rahul Gandhi, it could be Akhilesh Yadav, it could be a single face. When we have a lot of opposition fighting across the country, the BJP has to face Congress with Madhya Pradesh. We BJP has to face uh, Mamta ji on. Uh, in uh, west bengal vgp has to face akhilesh yadav ji in uh, uh, up so definitely bjp will be in a trouble at that stage look there are also historical facts uh, no, but the we political that, law, oh, no just, Rashtos, just let me get to let me get to don't buy this argument at all ha because the that is reason that, don't buy this argument ha, until and, unless the opposition is united how no. will oppose bjp in unison now that is a problem Because adding two plus two is going to be a four in is in this arithmetic is very good. But what we have seen in twenty nineteen, adding SP and BSP, we couldn't get it such a round of number what we were expecting. So there is a. So that was because of... Mayawati did not. My because that was my. I am sorry to interrupt you, Doctor Ashok Sharma, but I feel that Nilu that was largely because Mayawati had only put up a facade of unity. Mayawati was not ever interested. She was only settling. Settling scores with what had been done to the other by the Samajwadi Party, and she was not honest in that uh, coalition. I mean, in that come come by sorry, not coalition. What I mean, meant is in that uh, combine that she had formed. I she didn't she didn't want it, and the way she, it happened, she gained, and the Samajwadi Party lost in that this whole game because she so, was fooling the Samajwadi. Yes, Ashutosh, so, you want to so, what, yes? Whatever we had been the result, the result was that we haven't uh, we were not able to stop the BJP. The final result was this. Look about the 2004 elections. Just about the Atal Bihari Bajpayee regime in Uttar. I am talking about the reference of Uttar Pradesh. There are five parties contesting independently: Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party, Indian National Congress, Bharti Janata Party, and Rashtriya Lok Dal. Samajwadi Party got historically 39 seats. Bahujan Samaj Party 23 seats. The Congress 21 seats. BJP 10 seats and RLD 5 seats. What happened? The BJP was outset. UPA came in. the similarly what we happened in 2019 uh, 2009 the election the all the five parties uh, contested independently again samajwadi party got 23 seats bharti samaj bahujan samaj party 20 seats congress this time 21 and again bjp was 10 seats so now this is a way what we are getting adding a number doesn't suit us and what we have experienced from the last few elections and also from the last history so it is a way that we can do in so we are not against the congress let's say congress wants to come with uh, with the alliance it's no problem but at least congress should go and sit with uh, samajwadi party uh, samajwadi party is the principal opposition we have one so why doesn't party. your party say it very clearly that you want congress yeah. to make the first move you say it very clearly right. that samajwadi party is ready to ally with congress provided that congress makes a first move why is that statement not coming from your party no because congress is not interested look So no, Congress is not interested. The Samajwadi Party is not interested. But I think I think it's a basic basic condition uh -huh. because both both parties are not coming. Look, 
from 2022 the priyanka gandhi who is the coordinator of uttar pradesh she has visited once in uttar pradesh hmm. now this is the situation and how serious they are thinking i am okay. sorry to say that congress is not even interested even the local urban elections in the which is coming to the next two, two or three months in the uttar pradesh not even a single person mm -hmm. is coming the, the the state meetings are uh, disturbed uh, two days back they have uh, given a protest in the uh, rajbhavan it was a, such a messy messy protest i can't say that uh, it's not a stature of congress so okay. if congress is not going to play a role in the position of uttar pradesh definitely samajwadi party will not wait for the congress to come and join us we yeah. have a power we will do and we will stop here the bharti janta party my point was that few days ago mamta didi made an announcement that trinamool will not ally with any party for 2024 you will go solo now again there are reports that probably you are working towards an alliance which is going to be minus congress now what does that mean is it some kind of a flip flop or is it some kind of a rethought on the part of mamta banerji i i i really can't understand if you could explain you know uh, let us take two scenarios right one scenario is that uh, the inclusion of congress post uh, elections and one is i mean the post poll alliance and one is pre poll alliance see with pre poll alliance just like ashutosh said that uh, congress is not going to make much of a difference in west bengal or in uttar pradesh or say let's say in punjab so i think it is much better for the regional parties from the opposition who can be you know let us say let us call them uh, 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 who can be a part of upa right but upa is not the name of pre poll allies please let us understand that fact upa right. is name of a post poll Absolutely. alliance upa can never be formed with pre poll alliance if they work on this strategy both congress will lose as well as all the regional parties as well at their own personal respective hubs now uh, nilu kindly yeah. bunker what i'm saying is that are these eight parties going to be in a pre poll arrangement is that what you're hinting at see uh, let me let me let me put it up all together because see the question is only one the segment is whether you are going to have congress on board or not hmm. that is the only part that you want to discuss the congress see let us understand hd devegowda ik gujral they were also the prime ministers they were also the prime ministers leaving behind the two big egos i mean in the country one is bjp and another is congress i always have been calling him uh, calling them two big egos because for them the mindset is if there is congress it's a uh, i mean it's a uh, it's it's a known fact that the prime minister has to come from the congress party But if it is nda we don't call it nda we call it bjp government so bankar just hold your thought monadeep wants uh, wants yeah, to say just uh, yeah i agree that uh, you know that is the problem that is the congress wants to say that my party is going to throw up the prime minister but i think mr karge has already said that is not necessarily the case and i thought it was quite a huge concession uh, coming yeah. from you know their uh, stated position but uh, you know nilu i also think we should start looking at the one, the elephant in the room what we are not talking about is the agencies that have been deployed by you know the bjp government against opposition leaders opposition parties in so many states isn't that a factor isn't that an arm twisting by the bjp that could be working as well our opposition leaders also having to deal with that problem that yeah their leaders are getting arrested getting thrown in jail being summoned harassed isn't that a factor at all very well yes shubankar you want to say something now it's a very good question i think monidipa is very right uh, the thing is uh, see the harm that bjp is actually putting uh, all parties into dilemma is that see if a, uh, if a finger is being raised at uh manish sisodia the thing lands up uh you know your uh, the aam aadmi party losing a leader i mean a leadership phase in delhi similarly if patho chatterjee is to be blamed so we lose a leader we are losing a leader right so that is one of the strategies of uh, bjp 
uh, that they are continuously playing with any big name that is coming into no, but but when you admit when you admit that you know misuse of enforcement agencies is a big issue on that particular pretext why can't all the opposition parties come together now i'll give you an example now, now there is a catch i give you an instance shubhankar just, listen to me shubhankar listen to me there is one instance aam aadmi party was not seen all this while in parliament along with congress yesterday those visuals were for that uh, for everyone to see aam aadmi party uh, you know when the, the day when they were walking up to uh, the ed office aam aadmi sorry sorry not that day yesterday in parliament aam aadmi party leaders were seen with sanjay singh was there seen along with congress so if aam aadmi party can put aside its ego then why not trinamool congress should yes, that be me... asked of you yes uh, 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 nilu ji now this is this is interesting see this is the catch now if arvind kejriwal comes openly uh, uh, to you know to protect uh, manish sisodia uh, so it will be much easier for bjp to project that see they are going against the agency these people have a you know uh, it, it's some side of uh, it's it's a conspiracy that is being built so similarly they can actually be blaming each and every party say with trinamool what happened uh, uh, with uh, uh, sarvesh uh, sarvesh uh, i'm just forgetting his name who uh, uh, he was supporting us on uh, on on uh, on insta and facebook and what happened is that he was picked up from from the from the home uh, similarly what happened with uh, like partho chatterji see pa with partho chatterji arpita was actually planted a lot of media was actually pointing to the thing that the arpita is actually but, but still trinamool had to you know distant itself from prastho chatterji why because we didn't want you know the larger part of the mud getting on to us so that is one thing where all the parties you know get into that catch 20 position that they cannot do anything out of that body so this is a very positive thing with any party which has been ruling see congress had been also doing the same thing let us not forget that right so congress had the history bjp learned from them and now they are practicing it in more better way so they now know how oh. to control the agencies how to ah. use them what? against the so uh moridibe what what i want to understand is that what is this uh, coalition really going to achieve by samajwadi party and trinamool coming together along with all these eight uh, opposition parties who wrote a letter to prime minister on 5th march what will be the end objective i really cannot fathom if you could explain I'm sorry. I cannot explain either because the whole process seems to be, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, directed at completely breaking up opposition unity. I mean, look at that letter that they wrote to the prime minister. Nitish Kumar didn't sign that, right? So that was one out, one less person. Congress didn't sign it. So there was not even unity in writing to the prime minister and saying that stop harassing us with your agencies. So what kind mm -hmm. of unity is that? Samajwadi Party and Trinamool are suddenly talking. What happens to Mayawati? What happens to you know the other parties, BRS, etc.? I don't know what their position is on this. So at the moment, if you ask me, uh, standing here in Kolkata and watching Mamata Banerjee, it does seem that uh, opposition unity is going to be a myth in 2024. Whether it is eight, whether it is plus Congress, whether it is minus Congress. just looks very very fragmented at the moment and that simply means advantage bjp but i don't know prophecy no no i let I, i'll come to you shubhankar i uh, give a prophecy okay you want to prophesy yes go ahead go ahead what is the prophecy you want to, to want me to talk about <laughs> see i tell you what is going to happen in 2024 congress if they don't gain their ground what will happen is that a postal alliance can only be framed with a comparatively either a much stronger congress right which will be a part of that anti incumbency if not if congress goes down then congress will support the entire alliance from outside that is meant to happen so let's not worry about it let the regional parties fight their own war at their own turf let them come up together it is only a matter of time when it comes up if congress loses it is not that bjp gains it might be possible that in kolkata if congress is down it will gain uh, uh, the trinamool congress 
in up in up samajwadi party the loss of congress but, will but always you, add to samajwadi party oh okay, but you are you are talking about the future plan and in politics you know about 6 7 months uh, is is a long time you know to wait and watch out for everybody will have to see but what i wanted to ask ashutosh was that you know when all these eight parties come together which of course includes uh, samajwadi party trinamool aap brs rjd there is lot of divergence and variance within now rjd is in a uh, coalition with congress in bihar then you have uh, parties like dmk where congress is aligned with them in tamil nadu then uh, you know national conference uh, we all saw that uh, farooq abdullah how he walked along with rahul gandhi during the bharat jodo yatra so and now you are bringing in all these forces uh, you know the the biggest question uh, which which is in everybody's mind is how long lasting will this front be if at all you are you are successful in forging this alliance which is minus congress so neelu or, there, or there is it is simply or is it simply an effort to phase out and isolate congress let's be honest about that so is that neelu the... to be a very honest there is nothing going to be a third front there is a misnomer that we are making a third front what i want to say that there is a regional opposition forces hmm. in uh, bihar there is a regional opposition of mahagathbandhan in uttar pradesh we feel that we are the main opposition face in bengal we feel that mamta ji is but the, then are you so, are you in a so position look, look, to look, say look. are you in a Definitely. position to say that it is modi versus the regional front are you in a position to say that no the modi it's not bharti janta party versus opposition in different sectors in different faces when rajasthan in rajasthan there there is a fight between congress and bharti janta party definitely we will help congress there go okay. and fight them but okay. we will not let them congress to intervene that you decide what to mm. do in uttar pradesh that is the main main problem okay so now mm. when, when when mamta ji is fighting in west bengal we know all that that she is a dare enough to fight and alone with uh, bharti janta party how can mm. i as a samajwadi party said okay i am going to contest in all 40 seats now in, in uh, west bengal this is a this is a waste waste of time and energy mm. that's what i want to say then where the congress is strong in congress in shimla uh, sorry see, himachal pradesh you don't want in to rajasthan give congress, you don't want to give congress those decisive powers where they decide as to how many seats will uh, exactly. some party party contest or exactly exactly let the, let you decide in uh, rajasthan in madhya pradesh where you are in one to one fight but don't decide in uttar pradesh at least oh. you give us some liberty to the opposition men what they are doing mm. that's the main reason Okay. Okay. Fine. Let me come to Sharaji. Sharaji, this uh, regional front, ah. as what uh, Ashutosh says. Now, how workable hmm. does that look like? Because Ashutosh does have a point when he says this. Yes. Well, uh, well, Nilu, I, I, I seem to agree with what Ashutosh and Shubankar both have in mind. They may not be expressing it in as many words, but I, I think it makes sense to have regional players fighting the might of the BJP in different states. wherever they are strong and then look for a post poll alliance which i think should be a more really workable solution and i all seem to also agree with when when ashutosh says if or if everybody joins together there it might be an easier battle for the bjp because things may not be the same if the way they are going on defending adani going out of the way it is definitely watering down all the aura that uh, uh, modi had managed to build around himself Achha, largely on account of playing of hindutva my saying if i may if uh, i may interrupt you yeah. this particular arrangement of a regional mm. front does look like an easy pre poll arrangement but then think of the post poll scenario if all these people come together they they defeat bjp now the post poll scenario looks scarier now you will have those uh, powerful regional leaders say that look there is a stronger role in up why should our, my candidate not become the prime minister would that not look become like a cat fight the post poll scenario it, it, it could but i think i think then that is where the maturity of the regional players regional leaders will have to be viewed i fully agree with you i am not denying that that there'll be too many ambitions cropping up from every corner of the country but then again if the congress manages to have its numbers way ahead of others which is which is quite likely then congress will be able to people will have to come together and accept somebody whether it is congress or a party 
which puts up it will be a game of numbers whoever has the larger numbers otherwise you know but at the same time it is you as far as the misuse of agencies enforcement agencies is concerned that is where the opposition must stand united at least on that issue right don't i i agree that you don't make a pre poll alliance for 24 but when it comes to fighting the bjp's the unconstitutional ways of dealing with the opposition which is make blatant misuse of the of the enforcement directorate of the cbi then they must stand together and fight back even on the streets they should be seen together right people of the country should know how these agencies are being you misused only to gain political mileage no no but uh, uh, shubhakar what i want to know from you is that when the entire opposition is ranting about adani when the entire opposition of course uh, rahul's apology i'm not getting into that because that's a totally different issue and it uh, it belongs to rahul gandhi only what he said in cambridge but trinamool congress is 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 then waking up issues like uh, lpg cylinders and you have bigger issues now you know the misuse of enforcement agencies which everybody now is talking about the fact that this particular issue is one issue which can unite the entire opposition so does the trinamool congress look like in a totally different direction when people are raking up adani you are talking about high prices of cylinders i'm not discounting that this is not an issue not at all it is a people's issue which has to be raised by the opposition but somewhere down the line if you look at the optics trinamool has to look like some some entity which is in line with the entire opposition or it's can i can i just uh, yes. add one one small thing before yes, you uh, shumakar comes in um, i just want to point out how bjp has finally managed mayavati i would say managed because very openly right. you can see whatever she first of all she doesn't speak when she speaks it is always something which will indirectly or directly benefit the bjp and it is very evident everybody knows it is now she is more worried about her wealth than the party that is why the party has gone to dogs and that is why what you pointed out earlier a little while ago that political parties are being systematically intimidated by the use of these agencies to silence them and they have succeeded with mayavati very openly so oh, and that is the suspicion that people have about tmc also that is the suspicion with what which people have about the t about tmc also getting scared so chubankar is tmc not intimidated by ed or cbi not any more it looks see, like i tell you i tell you see uh, we need to understand bb first right see mamta energy is basically the leader of poor people right number one you need to understand that her major uh, you know uh, the setup her major the thing has been in the rural areas the rural is hardly you know they are bothered with who adani is or who ambani is the the rural is basically you know they get affected with the rising prices of cylinder the rising prices of you know uh, once you have all the uh, petrol and diesel rising so the things do get affected so that is where mamta banerji has always been hitting and she will be like that because that is where she has actually risen number one so let us not mix both the issues together number two now when it comes to the issue like uh, say uh, uh, putting you know how do we actually uh, you know face bjp how do we actually push bjp aside yes it's a hard thing because the thing is being in the center and being in the power and that also in nda they are the most powerful one you can just see you know the jdu the way the jdu is also uh, you know uh, the reacting so there is always a fear you never know which side actually compromises you know so with all those things coming up it is better mamta yes, energy yes. wants to keep the connect of the rural and the uh, state together till the you know the national issues actually come up that way okay i get your point there is a sense of uh, mistrust as far as trinamool congress is concerned so you really want to measure and calibrate your steps fair enough i want to come to for the last thoughts uh, first to ashutosh and then to monadipa uh, ashutosh now i want to know your national executive starts tomorrow and day after and uh, what we are told is that probably the party is going to lay out a road map for 2024 elections what can we expect are you going to make some sort of an announcement where the party is uh, probably looking at this this coalition which is going to be minus congress or the entire focus would be totally on samajwadi party where all it will fight and how will it fight what will be the center focus of this national executive so, so get yeah. some big headlines arising out of these two days no i'm sorry we are not going to give you any big headlines right now 
it's a national <laughs> it's a routine it's a routine national executive meeting and definitely we are focused about the 2024 elections definitely the talk will be about the coalition how the candidates will be decided and we have also a focus on the upcoming uh, constituency assembly elections in chatisgarh madhya pradesh and rajasthan also so uh, there are a lot of things are going on uh, we are also focused about the uh, different parts of because 20, we have a, a party organization among 20 states so right. 20 pre state presidents are also coming and they are giving their uh, reports ki, uh, is there a scope for us to expand outside the uttar pradesh or not so this is the way only we are going definitely okay, okay but you disappointed me by saying that you are not going to give us uh, definitely not what we expected <laughs> okay moridipa last thoughts to you this entire coalition this coalition terribly disappointing ashpur ji that no headlines are going to come out of the sp uh, meeting you being, and your party being in kolkata so imagine what disappointment it is, is it's for moridipa absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but i i will say that you know i think uh, he mentioned chatisgarh and rajasthan and madhya pradesh and i really think we'll have to uh, you know wait till the elections to these states are over to figure out what the configuration of an opposition unity might look like for 2024 we have karnataka and then we have uh, uh, you know chatisgarh and rajasthan where the congress is in power and depending on their performance there you know uh, that will probably decide a lot of stuff what we have just come away from just this earlier this month is of course the northeast elections and we saw what happened over there one of the other things that we saw happening over there is trinamool didn't exactly you know really put up a great show so that must have been hugely disappointing for the party given these realities uh, we will have to and trinamool will have to wait for the congress and its performance in these forthcoming assembly elections so, Parker, to put I'm, I'm running short report. of time i'm really running short of time i know you want to say something but we can have another debate over this but uh, of course all eyes would be on what akhilesh yadav tells his party workers in the two days national executive which will start tomorrow and of course all eyes would be on what this eight party coalition if at all it comes to fusion what will be its larger goals and how workable will it be minus congress that's a million dollar question thank you all of you uh, monadeepa thank you very Ashton, much Parmash, thank you Parker. thank you very thank much you. it was wonderful having you on the program thank you so thank much you. and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this debate share this video as widely as you can subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to the federal thank you subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more interesting updates